They're not sportscasters. This isn't a morning show, and they're not tour guides. They don't take you to a country. They cross rivers, ride camels, summit mountains, sleep in jungles, and take you 100 kilometers east of nowhere to embed you in the toughest endurance sport on the planet. This is the Adventure Racing World Series. Eric's been around so long, he raced Eco Challenge. Viv stepped out of film school right into the wilds. She keeps this show from going off the rails. Go with them. They don't know where they're going. Welcome to the Adventure Center, the nightly broadcast of the Adventure Racing World Series. Well, good morning and welcome to day five of the Adventure Race here in Ireland. This might be our uh, day to see some winners. It's uh, Eric and Viv with the Adventure Center and the Air World Series. We're headed down to find the transition between the trek and the kayak. And my understanding is this was a dark zone, thus we're out here in the dark. They'd just come off the uh, last night, sometime came off the mountains. Because they're going into a river, it's too dangerous to negotiate at night, so this is a dark zone. There's also a lot of midges to negotiate, because we're <laughs> down by the river, so it's getting a bit bitey down here. So we've made it down here to the transition from the trek into the last paddle into the finish. And right behind us, making their way sleepily yeah. to the uh, transition and to their kayaks to put in is Team FMR, the French team, who's still holding first place by quite a large margin. They separated themselves from the mountains. Yeah, they took off uh, where we left you yesterday. They were very, very uh, close to the second team, Swaco, and we thought maybe this might be an interesting night, might see some change-ups on the mountain. But it looks like these guys have found a motor and just absolutely flown across the top of this mountain. Uh, comment tu as um, trouvé le, le vitesse pendant le, les montagnes pour avoir la, la une vitesse de l'équipe? Oui, pour, oui, pour avoir une grande distance entre toi et Swaco. Et euh, bah c'est vrai qu'on savait pas trop les cas. On devait être autour des, des deux heures avant de partir. Et euh, sur un trek comme ça, une petite erreur d'orientation ou un petit coup de moins bien, c'est vite. Euh, surtout que c'est la quatrième nuit, c'est vite. Euh, ça peut vite vite coulé mm -hmm. euh, le temps d'avance donc euh, on, est, on a essayé de partir sur un bon rythme et puis euh, se reposer un petit peu avant se reposer pendant et on s'est vraiment préparé pour ce trek pour pouvoir le, le faire dans un temps euh, très correct et je pense qu'on l'a bien fait ouais, ouais <rire> absolument ça c'est sûr alors euh, dis-moi pour, euh, pour le dernier section c'est un kayak oui tu vas aller euh, plus fort ou maintenant, maintenant parce que tu as des temps tu vas de, euh... ouais, je pense qu'on va savoir avec l'équipe cette dernière section uh -huh. et puis après on va, on va essayer de garder un tempo pour rester dans la compétition aussi et puis on verra, on va essayer de, de voir le lever de soleil, ça va, ça va être joli ce matin en espérant pouvoir le voir parce Absolument. que je crois que ce, ce matin il... aujourd'hui c'est une belle journée ouais, <rire> il n'y a pas trop d'eau <rire> merci, pour, merci. Euh, pour parler merci Basically, they said they're really prepared for this trek. We've heard that the French are very good at trekking. Um, they really uh, were ready for this. They took their time. They made very smart decisions. And because it was the fourth night, it's close to the end of the race. They just, they just nailed it. Um, I then asked if uh, if they're going to continue the pressure uh, on the last section. Um, they will. They will continue because it is a race. They want to stay in the competition. But in his words, they want to make the most of the sunrise. So that was pretty funny. They um, have just been told by the race officials that they have to carry the boats 500 meters to where they put them in. And <laughs> we heard this little exclamation from one of the teams, 500 meters! <laughs> <laughs> so they got literally 500 kilometers. And 500 meters is now an effort. <laughs> But uh, yeah, these guys are absolutely exhausted. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It's just every little thing now becomes an effort. In adventure racing, you know, you, you're really driving hard and you're really pushing. You turn yourself inside out. But then when you get closer and closer to the finish, especially if you have a lead like they do, every little thing becomes this tiny, ridiculous effort you have to do. Like, you, why aren't my boats just right in the water? <laughs> and now they're allowed to head into the water. There's a bit of a cruel <laughs> trick to it. <laughs> They've just done like a, it was about, oh, it was a 40, 50k hike or something like that. And now they've uh, now they have to portage their boats 500 meters uh, to where they actually put them in. And you can see here they're doing a bit of a teamwork. The boys are taking most of the load here uh, to get these boats into the into the river. And um, and the girl is in the back chatting. <laughs> no, to be fair, she's carrying the backpacks. It's actually worth noting that, that teams will often do this, and we've seen it before in the race, uh, helping each other out, carrying backpacks for each other. Uh, we saw the God Zone team were doing that to help a weaker member uh, through, a, through a race. And it's not always the girls, I have to say. 
Uh, we've definitely seen our fair share of guys that have needed needed a hand. Um, and so this is what we've got here, great teamwork, carrying the backpacks here, and then uh, a three-man effort up here carrying the boats. Yeah, it's uh, essential that you have great team dynamics and you can move through these type of sections where you're having to work together when it's you're blowing bubbles, it's mentally stressful, and you're just in pain. And this is when arguments and fights and stuff can break out, but you have to have great dynamics like these guys do to be in the first place. And you've got such a comfortable lead, yeah. why are you remaining? Adventure racing, everything can happen. There we go. That's one of the most common things that we hear. Uh, adventure racing, anything can happen. And we've certainly seen it this race, and we've seen it a lot in the races we've covered in the past. Um, so even though you can see the finish line, it's not yours until you've crossed it. Well, they're launching into the canoe section, and it's this race has been long and it's changed. The course has changed. It's moved. It's been very diverse because of the weather, because of safety. And in adventure racing, what makes this so unique is that it's not what you have been through, but it's what is lying before you. So these guys are closing in. They've just finished the, it's actually a canoe. I've been calling it a kayak all morning, but as you can evidently see, that's a pair of canoes. So let's go down and see how they So they finished this uh, section of the canoe uh, from when we saw them just earlier this morning. They're obviously still in first place, but uh, it's gonna be interesting how the places turn out. And we'll talk to you about that uh, at the finish line. Uh, C'est bon? Welcome to the Adventure Center and the finish of the ITER 2016 ITERA Adventure Racing World Series race. Uh, you can see, maybe you can see around us, but everyone's starting to get excited because we're going to have the first team to cross the line. Now, it's worth noting that this, we have to be very technical here. This the first team to cross the line, but we cannot call them the winners until all the times and everything has been checked later. There's time penalties, time awards, depending on whether your boat sunk or whether you were in a dark zone or whether a section was taken out. There's a lot of things that need to be added up. It's a bit like the Tour de France. The, the, the yellow jersey rider will often cruise in over the Champs-Élysées, but uh, because he's performed well uh, in the previous days of the race, he actually takes the overall prize. And one of the things you might notice in adventure racing, after slogging through about 500 kilometers of terrain, the racers aren't exactly going to be sprinting across the finish line. I think they get a little gallop going, as we can see in the background. Here they are. This is uh, FMR from France. We followed them this morning. We're crossing the finish line after about four and a half days of non-stop trekking through mountains, oceans, jumping off cliffs, caves. Yeah, it's been a pretty adventurous race. And all done under some pretty tough weather. So let's come in. Ben told it's a finishing medal, and that is because we're unsure of all the time stamps. Excited, although the racers are pretty excited, the race director is pretty excited that the race is coming to a finish. This is almost a sub story if we could follow the race directors around. Uh, they have all sorts of issues come up uh, whether uh, teams slower or faster than they expected, uh, injuries, and, and this, constant, this constant kind of backstory. The, the race director is often kind of two stages behind everybody. Um, We're having some antics in the background here. They're having some fun. I, I have the impression we we have started yesterday only, but um, uh, it has been very tough because of the rain, because of the condition, because of the long uh, stages. There was not a lot of stages, but long stages. And um, uh, yes, we had to to planify a lot and to change because of the changing. Uh, of the condition weather. Uh, we came in this final part, we organized with uh, Julien to share uh, the navigation. You do that, I do that, and then switch to uh, rest as much as we can. And then like we came to the, the first big, big hill, we crossed uh, many layers of uh, mist and uh, we get, get to the top and have more and more light and no more cloud and then the moon and then it was much 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 more easier i mean in the navigation point the rest was tough for the legs directors the teams everybody's starting to see this sort of finish except for the teams that are still up there these guys have finished in about four and a half days they're teams that still have probably a day and a half of racing to go so Viv and I have hiked up, we're headed up to the highest point in Ireland, 
and going back on teams and we're about to get some because Viv just saw them coming in looking like sheep. Yes, uh, they spray paint the sheep around here as some sort of identification mark. But when you're, when you're team spotting, uh, you think there's a lot of teams and they turn out to be sheep. But we've got a team of humans. So uh, they're, they're moving pretty fast and I would too with weather like this and the finish line not too far away. So um, I'm going to send Eric up to do some hard work. <laughs> He's going to chase him for an interview and I'm going to prop down here and get some pretty shots. How was the mountain? Uh, a bit hectic. Yeah? Yeah. We're sucking wet again for the uh, Indian time next, next time. Um, no, it was good. Challenging, I guess. You know, you've got terrain. Uh, we were fourth living this morning and we actually just spotted the team behind or what we think is the team behind us going up to the last checkpoint. So, so there may be like a few minutes. So you ranked us. fourth place? So far maybe. Okay. So either fourth or fifth. Coming down off the peak here and uh, they're hard on the tail of the fourth place team. So this is either fifth place or possibly one of the uh, unranked teams. We'll find out. But man, it is wet and windy up here and these guys have been up in that mist above us. Probably about 15, uh, probably about 800 meters uh, above us. How are you? Awesome. Yeah, how so? Oh, it's good, it's beautiful up there. Back view up. They're the only view so far. Yeah. Just up there. Phenomenal, phenomenal. So the clouds parted for you? Well, if you just go up over the sand and get into the loft, yeah, it's beautiful. So we just got on the road at two, so we were up on the first CP1 at about 9.30, so seven and a half hours up Are there. you a uh, ranked team, unranked? We are ranked short course. Ranked short course, yeah. right on. So yeah. Yeah. what do you think you're sitting right now? No, I don't care, having fun. Awesome, that, that is fire. what it's about. Absolutely, it's cool, it's been awesome, it's been brilliant. Even though it's been so wet, but it's been great. I right. just can't wait to get my wet shoes off, I'm so sore feet. Well, despite how crap our, our vision is making adventure racing look, uh, looks are very deceiving in this sport. These guys are actually in very high spirits, and it's worth noting that adventure racing is, is an incredible mental thing. You're overcoming a, a massive challenge, you're working together with teams, you're forming a bond with, with people you, you really are not going to afford at the office by the water cooler. Get an idea of what their feet might look like. They have to suffer not only through the cold and water, but no matter what you do, even with Gore-Tex shoes, nothing protects you from them going in. Your feet eventually look like ah, this. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, I think a special mention needs to go out to the race of directors, I think, in very hard trying conditions uh, where they had to make a lot of adjustments. As usual, with adventure racing, really sort of fly by the seat of your pants sometimes and, and make those critical decisions and make the right calls at the right times. And I think also credit to them on the time adjustments that they've made. They did them in a speedy fashion and also their um, leaderboard, they had that up to date very quickly. I think it's the best I've ever seen as far as getting a leaderboard up to date and, and information in there quickly. It's very job very well done. It's tough. It was tough for the races and it was tough for us as an organisation. You know, there's a lot of changes we had to make because of the weather. Um, but, it, you know, I think uh, there's a tendency that, yeah, I guess if I benchmark it against uh, stopping the race and putting 140 people on a coach, you know, that we managed to get to the end and that's what we're good at doing. At the moment, the way it works out is FMR came first, uh, uh, Godzo came second and Sweco came third. And, um, yeah, it was just an hour between the second and third places. I'd like to make a special mention of a couple of the Irish teams, uh, particularly uh, Rachel's excellent Irish adventure. Uh, this team has been very solid all the way through and only just behind that lead four teams and yeah, they've, they've done themselves proud and uh, coming along to, through to the finish line in great form and great shape. Uh, obviously the other Columbia Irish team as well, um, they had a little bit of a problem on the Dingle Peninsula there and lost a little bit of time and, and have slipped back a little bit but they had a great race as well and along with um, Rachel's adventure I think those two Irish teams have, have done themselves very very proud. Often the teams at the back of the field do it harder than anyone else and these guys have still been on full course, they've still been battling away all the way through. Often you know 
they know they're going to be out for longer, so they have to carry more food. Sometimes they carry more clothes, clothing, and such things. They, you know, they just do it tougher. And and I don't think even the top teams would uh, doubt this for a minute that they're out there longer, they're wetter, they're colder, and they really have to dig deep and, and battle very hard. So hats off to those guys. And I think any team that finishes an adventure race has a story to tell, whether at the front of the pack, back of the pack. Uh, competitive or non-competitive short course it's uh, it's one of the amazing things about adventure racing is that everyone has a story to tell but I often think this, the teams at the back of the field probably have the most interesting story to tell for sure well that's about it for me I don't know if there'll be any more updates so uh, I've enjoyed the the race and bringing you updates and uh, analysis I guess thanks very much and Eric and Viv it's been great working with you and Hopefully we'll get to do it again sometime. Well, the Adventure Centre is signing off for Ireland here at Lake Gool. Oh, what is it? Gool. It's G-O-O-G-H. I do apologise, I cannot pronounce Irish. I pretty much apologise for all the mispronunciations, <laughs> as we're doing our best. But we're up here at an alpine lake that's in the shadow of Ireland's highest mountain. Again, I will save you uh, and myself the embarrassment of trying to pronounce that one. But I think it's about three, uh, a thousand metres. I think it's about a thousand meters. I could be wrong, but that's what we heard. Teams are coming down off there and off the saddle. There. That, that'll be the rain. As you can see, it's raining. Viv and myself have really enjoyed Ireland. We're here with the Adventure Center and Air World Series. Thanks for watching. Uh, as I'm sure you know, this is the first time that the Adventure Center has aired, and we've absolutely loved it. We've got great plans for it, but we'd also love to know what you thought. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of the uh, content that we put out not only from the races but hey we'll have a wipe on this real quick <laughs> bear with us venture center embeds itself with the racers that's what we're trying to do here we're trying to bring you inside the race rather than just tell you about it show you an experience so we can give it to you the way it's happening it is a tricky spot to understand a lot of the racers want you to know that this is not a triathlon so stay tuned oh hang on <laughs> So even though the Adventure Centre will only broadcast during a race, there's plenty of content for you to check out in between races on the channel. Viv, how about Ireland? It's a, it's a pretty amazing place. Don't let the weather put you off. As they said when we got here, it's not bad weather, it's bad clothing. <laughs>